Um, I'll be free.
Saudis have provided at least 2,500 fighters to the Islamic State in Syria. News reports from 2013 stated that the Saudis offered more than 1,200 death row inmates a pardon and a monthly payment for their families to go fight the Syrian government. In 2009, U.S. officials said Saudi Arabia was the most significant source of funding to Sunni terrorist groups worldwide. Why is America selling arms to a country that has supported terror, has a poor human rights record, and has waged a reckless war in Yemen? No amount of oil business or arms deals justifies our collusion with a regime that sponsors jihadism across the world. We are enabling Saudi Arabia to prosecute a war that has killed tens of thousands and left a million more on the brink of famine. I'm sorry, eight million more on the brink of famine. Without American intelligence, logistics, training, and equipment, the Saudi war effort would have fallen apart long ago. Contention three, military aid does not meet US objectives. Recipients of US funding and weapons have largely failed to make major strides in their capabilities, and in some instances have regressed. Despite 47 billion in US military assistance over 40 years, the Egyptian military has struggled to contain an ISIS affiliate numbering no more than 1,200 militants. The track record of using security assistance to increase U.S. influence in the region is no more encouraging. Ongoing U.S. assistance to Egypt did not leave Cairo open to American pleas to desist from forcibly dispersing two largely nonviolent sit-ins in the capital, in which over 800 people were massacred. Because the marginal benefits of military aid are nowhere close to justifying the harms to human rights that unchecked authoritarianism perpetrates, I am proud to affirm. I now stand down for cross-examination. Thank you. So, um, um, I put them on some of the questions. So, your whole case is based on the idea if you stop sending them military aid, they will stop abusing human rights, and therefore the quality of life will uh, rise worldwide. Right, when we're giving dictators money and weapons, they use that money and weapons to oppress their own people. Um, would you agree that uh, authoritarian regimes have a strong need for those weapons to stay in power? Um, would you agree that they will try to get those weapons from elsewhere if the U.S. stops providing them with those weapons? See, I think they will probably, yes, but the point remains that the United States has the largest arms producing capabilities in the world. Right now, the closest to us in Ru is Russia, and we supply six more times arms than they do. Like, no other country has the capabilities to keep producing weaponry at the scale and magnitude that we do, and so I think it's, Do you have the like, evidence for that? Uh, yeah. Um... Um, so your basic idea is to, um, by stop influencing uh, those countries, they will eventually also become democracies, is that correct? Sorry? Because uh, you, you see that the decline of democracies worldwide, so you mean by stop sending military aid to those countries, will create more democracies worldwide, is that how your logic runs? Well, I think the reason that we're seeing like dem uh, authoritarianism grow at such a rate today is that we're not willing to draw a hard line on supporting it, right? Like we're always able to find these situations in which we can justify supporting it in cases because of convenience or because like we like think that like some okay. human rights okay. cases are so, minimal, I guess. Um, so I think like stopping, cutting off military aid and making sure that authoritarian regimes like don't have any power, like yeah, that's going to enable us to like, we will still continue course. sending military aid to democracies. Uh, yeah. And you mentioned that, uh, for example, Turkey be is now becoming an authoritarian regime, even though it was prior a democracy. So you will also continue with uh, um, that. Well, like, like they were. Are you going I don't to think continue they've ever sending been, like, support defined. to Turkey? Um, no, they're authoritarian regimes right now. Like they're like on the edges of authoritarianism. Like, yeah, if we're looking at a spectrum of authoritarian regimes, like with North Korea being. Like on the do, do, do you think it was right in the first place to send the military aid when they were still a democracy, even though they are now in a short-term regime? Do you think that was uh, legitimate? Because you believe it's right to send uh, military aid to, to a democracy. So was it then right to send military aid to Turkey in the past? When was Turkey a democracy, sorry? Uh, before Erdogan, they had, uh, okay. they had elections, and the OECD confirmed his election. If, if a government is constitutionally responsible to its people, then yeah, I think we should we can send that military aid. Okay. If, uh, if we're committing a host of human rights violations and not being held accountable for that, then we cannot. Okay. Was, was is this the time? Oh, okay. second. Yeah, oh, and did you want to see like the evidence about the arms sales or? Yeah. I can go and look at the 
this during downtime. Oh, oh, this is that not the one? Okay, sorry. Uh, you can look at it during downtime. Okay, no, no, I think I got what I wanted. <coughs> yeah, um, I will run a bit of downtime, not a lot, like a minute or so. Hello, my name is Maxim Andronescu, and I'm from Negotiation of the Resolution Resolve. The United States ought not provide military aid to authoritarian regimes. The negation presents the value of stability. Stability creates economic opportunities as well as safety of the peace process. The key pillar of stability is security. Without the ability to protect one's, one's government, it risks be being overtaken by another state or destabilized by terrorist activities. Thus, my value criteria is safety. I want to point out uh, the frame. The affirmative position relies on evidence that suggesting military aid to a regime has been unsuccessful. Recognize, however, that the affirmative must prove why it is immoral to deny aid to all authoritarian regimes. On the neck, we don't have to support status quo military aid. There are res responsible policies and conditions the U.S. can implement to make aid more successful. We don't have to defend the worst case example the F is providing. The F uh, uh, provided the example of Saudi Arabia. Uh, we don't need uh, to protect this example. The first point is that withdrawing military aid makes things worse. First of all, I want to show why authoritarian regimes have a strong need for weapons. Authoritarian states have a strong incentive to stay in power and stop security threats from destabilizing their country. I want to point out that my opponent agreed uh, during cross X that they have a strong incentive for weapons and that they will try to get uh, weapons from other states. If the US withdraws to send military aid to them, they will simply change supplies and get arms elsewhere. States like Russia and China would be more than willing to step in to fill the gap from the US, pulling the aid. Russia has already become the world's second largest arms supply as of 2018, according to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. According to her evidence, Russia's um, military um, sales rose by 8.5% over last year. And also according to her evidence, the US, um, the US uh, military sales only rose by about 2%, which, which shows us clearly that Russia is uh, increasing its military sales. Russia has already become the world's second largest arms supply as of 2018. According to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, China is working to influence more countries around the world, especially with the Belt and Road Initiative. They have already promised $100 million in military aid to Cambodia and have expanded their overseas military bases in Djibouti. Moreover, the EU already gives billions of dollars of aid to authoritarian states, including Saudi Arabia. This is important for two reasons. One, the best case scenario for F is that nothing would change. Authoritarian regimes would get their military supplies from other states with, which would give them the economic benefits of selling arms and we would lose major influence in strategic regions. Second of all, authoritarian regimes like Russia and China would embolden authoritarian regimes and worsen their behavior. Russia and China care far less about human rights abuses than the US. There is no independent media of it in those two countries that hold the government accountable. Therefore, they would allow more authoritarian behavior they, if they had influence over the states with military aid. I want to point out that my opponent's value criteria is minimum, minimize human rights. Minimize human rights. With her, uh, with her uh, affirmative position, it, human rights abuses would only increase and not reduce. Russia and China would furthermore get more political and economic opportunities and region critical for the US. Such opportunities make Russia and China stronger, allowing them to carry out dangerous military activities. 
Russia's invasion of Eastern Europe, states like Ukraine, show they are willing to start dangerous conflicts to get what they want. The same goes for China, who's edging close to conflict by dominating the South China Sea and threatening Japan. We need to ask ourselves, do we want to live in a world where the US is predominantly influencing the world order? Or do we want the US to step down from this position and give it over to China and Russia? My second point. Uh, uh, since authoritarian regimes will get their military aid elsewhere, we would prefer they get their aid from the US for a few reasons. Sub point A, the US provides more sophisticated and precise weaponry. These weapons are much better than Russia or China, who sell outdated post World War II and Cold War weapons that are less sophisticated and therefore produce a lot of collateral damage. For example, the Su-25 bomber Russia sells to Syria possesses no targeting system and therefore is more likely to accidentally hit civilian targets. Contrast that with the A-10 fighter jets sold to Saudi Arabia, which had guided missile systems that hit the intended target. This also points out her value criteria, um, saving human rights, um, um, which would not be true in affirmative world. Stop point B. The US government is more accountable because of its free press, other than China and Russia, which are all authoritarian regimes and don't care about accountability. An example are the war crimes committed by Assad and Syria, which are funded by Russia. The US expect moderate behavior because human rights play a higher value in the US than in China and Russia. If the authoritarian regime is committing war crimes, we can put sanctions in place to stop those from happening furthermore. I'm not saying that what we are doing is morally good. I'm saying that in the F world, we, uh, uh, more humans will die, more humans will die, and we will have a higher moral burden on us, ourselves. If we stop sending military aid, authoritarian regimes will still continue to kill people, but with dump bombs instead of laser transmission, which will result in higher unnecessary civilian deaths. That wouldn't happen otherwise. The US is morally accountable because those unnecessary deaths wouldn't happen otherwise. We trade our bloody hands into even filthier bloody hands through the proposal of the affirmative is making. <coughs> Furthermore, I'm going to talk about terrorism. Sub point A. A. A to authoritarian <coughs> regimes provides US ability to keep regimes in power against the threats of terrorist organizations. Many of these regimes are located in the Middle East, North Africa and Central Asia, which have a long history of terrorist insurgency taking over the government. Sub point B. A prevents the growth of terrorism. My first point, authoritarian regimes don't have the military resources on their own to fight terrorism, largely because they tend to be developing countries and have less money to divert to military. Second of all, US military, US military aid allows uh, the, us to keep our bases in their countries, allowing us to carry out massive counter-terrorism mis missions. To f the fight against ISIS would not have been possible without using bases in Saudi Arabia and Egypt. A third of all, without aid, regimes like Afghanistan would fall to groups like the Taliban, allowing them to carry out attacks against the US and their re regional allies, which is worse for the long term. How much time do I have? 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Um, furthermore, my opponent brought up that they will still support democracies. Uh, I don't agree that democracies are uh, increasingly um, also protecting human rights. If you look at Brazil, where they're uh, um, uh, not respecting LGBTQ rights, where we look at Poland, where they're not uh, respecting uh, the, demo the, the democratic uh, fundamental uh, institution that they're having. And um, yeah, therefore, I'm in. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it wasn't too fast. <laughs> so, like, I'm just gonna pose like a hypothetical situation here. So, like, how, if a man like came up to you and asked, like, if you like, and demanded that you torture someone, and if you didn't, they would ask a person, someone else, to torture them. Because in the end, there's going to be. Uh, so, so you mean like, what's the difference if I'm going to uh, torture him or someone else? Well, in this world, is that the other person is going to torture this person even worse and uh, increase uh, the suffrage the um, tortured person will um, have. So, um, if you now follow this through, if I would torture him, yes, I'll be morally accountable. But otherwise, then this person would 
be even tortured much heavily if I let the other person um, torture. Uh, in my next uh, rebuttal uh, speech, I will uh, bring up a similar example to yours. Um, okay. to that. But like, wouldn't a better response be to like, like try to help the person, like involve, like call the police? But but that's that's not an uh, that's not an uh, uh, available option because we know that if I don't do anything, the second person will most definitely um, torture the person worse than I will because I have because I as the US have. Uh, Am I taken accountable by my media and by my values I'm standing for? The other person, which in this example represents China and Russia, don't have this accountability and will then even worsen the situation. And I, I believe we should, shouldn't let this happen. All right. Um, so when we're looking at like if Russia has the capability to take over like as much as we have, like like would Russia be providing funds to say like Saudi Arabia to like um, yeah. Russia back to Iran? We are not like, like, like how do they have like interest in like every single like part of the world that we pull out? Um, uh, in my uh, speech, I did, did not only mention China. Also, uh, I did not only mention Russia. I also mentioned the European Union, which is uh, selling uh, billions worth of military aid to to Saudi Arabia. And I want to point out that Britain and France told Germany to sell more weapons to Saudi Arabia most recently because of economical interest. So we see that in future the European Union, the European Union is going to continue uh, to sell weapons because it invested a lot in its Eurofighter jet and it wants to sell it now and make it a good investment. All right. Um, do you think like how does stability achieve like like greater reforms, like democratic reforms? <coughs> well, we cr we create uh, by creating stability in those countries, we also ensure a safe life for those people. Uh, do you want a country that is terrorized by terrorists, where people cannot even go to school or can have a job or build up their company? I mean, is this what you stand? Is this for what you stand for? Uh, if I may ask a rhetorical question. I mean. I mean, by 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 by, by um, having stability, um, you ensure uh, the safety uh, of their lives. All right. I'm not saying of all the lives, but of the majority. Okay. Yeah.
right, so first I'm going to look on the value framework clash. All right, the problem is using stability as a value is that it's infinitely regressive. And by that, I mean it can be used to justify an increasingly large number of atrocities that also increase in magnitude. Like today, the negative is telling you that we must provide funds and put weaponry into the hands of military regimes who are instead using that to oppress their own people in order to maintain stability, in order to fight terrorism. However, the funny thing is, is stability is how authoritarian regimes justify the atrocities they are committing in the first place, right? The banning of people from traveling out of the country so they don't come back with funny ideas about rights and things, that's in order to maintain stability. The jailing of political dissidents because they can't spread their ideas, that's to maintain stability. The systematic killing of people because of their differences, whether it be by nationality, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender, in order to like upkeep this more harmonious society that like fits the ideal like message they have in their mind, like in Soviet Russia in the 1960s, that was in order to maintain stability. So you have to see from this, stability is no guarantee of equality of life, right? If North Korea, Soviet Russia, and the United States were incredibly stable places to live, and that's when there was no internal conflict and no terrorist groups attacking them. However, those were not good places to live. And from that, we can see that uh, stability does not ensure quality of life. All it ensures is the continued existence of that regime. All it ensures is that regime has the continued means it needs to keep repressing and killing its own people. So, and secondly, even if you don't buy that, I'd like to prove like how we're not actually achieving stability in the first place by taking military aid. So first of all, I talked to you about how terrorism, counterterrorism in the United States is being ineffective in a lot of cases. I talked to you about how even though we're investing $47 billion in Egypt, they're not becoming any more efficient in their attack against ISIS. In the Sinai Peninsula, <coughs> they're struggling to contain an ISIS affiliate numbering no more than 1,200 militants. Um, so that's not actually reducing terrorism. Secondly, when we give weapons to Saudi Arabia and money to Saudi Arabia, they funnel that money to ISIS fighters and they also like they fund ter terrorist groups. That's what my evidence said. Um, and, and and the fact is that he said that like we don't have to support Saudi Arabia, um, but like the fact is like we shouldn't have been supporting them in the first place, right? Like whenever we give military aid, we always think it's a good idea, right? We don't have that availability of hindsight. And so like I think I proved today that. Um, military aid in most cases results negatively, and even if there are a few examples in where it has like uh, resulted in good things, or like we withdrew it because we saw it result in bad things, like we shouldn't have that option in the first place because like we're always going to use it. And um, so I don't think you can just say we're going to withdraw it from places that have used it poorly because we shouldn't have had the option in the first place, and we shouldn't have like even had the option of decreasing the stability in the region by funneling money to ISIS through Saudi Arabia. Um, secondly, a lot of terrorist groups are committed by anti-American sentiment, right? Like when Yemeni citizens see American bombs like raining down on them, that's they're gonna not like the United States, and that's how terrorist groups like ISIS are actually born. Um, and third, this Russia-China example. First of all, like Russia and China do not have the military capacity to replace the United States. Like just to put it in perspective, New York, Texas, and California all have bigger GDPs than Russia, and that's an entire country. Like they simply don't have the economic capital the capabilities to keep churning out weapons in the way that they do. Um, secondly, he says like Russia weapons are gonna kill more people. Like first of all, he, um, and like I think the difference, like he says like the difference between Russia and the United States is that we care about human rights and Russia doesn't. But I think we like only claim to care about human rights right now. Like we're seeing like a, a US like air drones like indiscriminately um, killing many citizens. And I don't think it really makes a matter, a difference where the weapons are coming from. What is the difference is we're not in that regime, that regime, and, and, and terrorist groups and authoritarian regimes don't have like that money to happen. Thank you. Yeah, we'll run off my daughter. What's the phone is?
So you start a lot of money. last speech, I'm going to talk about the uh, um, uh, points. Uh, my I'm going to point, uh, talk about the points my opponent brought up, and then also uh, talk about my own point stability. The value of my opponent is quality of life. <coughs> she believes by stop sending military aid to authoritarian regime, all the suffrage in those countries will stop, and and um, and furthermore the government has uh, no opportunity to suppress its, uh, its people anymore. She hasn't uh, brought enough evidence to, to why the military, uh, why the authoritarian regime would have, no, would have no capability of suppressing its, its people after the US withdrawals. I brought up that uh, not, not only Russia would send military aid to authoritarian regime, uh, she only addressed Russia, not China and my EU example, but after the US with, uh, stopped sending military aid to, to Pakistan, China immediately signed a contract with Pakistan, uh, billions of worth of military aid to Pakistan. Furthermore, why is Russia only the second largest seller of military aid? Well, because the US dominates, dominates the market. Russia has a huge stockpile of old Cold War II Cold War and World War II weaponry that, that, that it is more than ready to sell, but because uh, the US is uh, having a monopoly on this market. Uh, by this I prove that the uh, Australian regimes will still continue to get weapons from other countries, and they will still continue to abuse human rights, and they will still continue to, um, um, and furthermore they will not have the accountability that the US uh, brings with us. I talked about how we have a, a, a media that takes uh, our government uh, accountable. This is something we don't see in Russia and China. A good example for that is Syria, where uh, the leader Assad is using chemical weapons against its own people. This is something we would start seeing also in other authoritarian regimes. Not only she brought up that that wouldn't happen in Saudi Arabia. Well, but there are also a lot of other authoritarian regimes that then they would get support from uh, Russia and China. Furthermore, those weapons will eventually kill more people. Mm. We need to ask ourselves, what is morally more acceptable? To, to, to uh, take the action and only kill one person, which is, yes, morally wrong, or do nothing and let another person kill two people. It is morally wrong to let uh, the other person kill, uh, ki uh, let do the action because his outcome is going to be more morally wrong. <coughs> Um, uh, furthermore, uh, she attacked my uh, point st uh, stability that by uh, creating a stable of certain regime, you only worsen the life of it. Yeah. So if you, if you think it through how she imagines the world is that if you stop sending military aid to those countries, well, the opposition will eventually, um, will eventually overthrow the government, terrorists will infiltrate the country, and you will have uh, no governmental structure uh, uh, left anymore, you will have no structures for uh, the economy to grow. You will have uh, no education, you will have no quality of life anymore if you don't have stability. St stability is the, f is, the f is the fundament to have a, 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 a quality of life. So um, if we compare, where would you uh, live rather more? In Syria, that, um, in, in Syria in a civil war, or in North Korea where you can actually where maybe you cannot express your opinion, but you, you, but you can live. You have the right to live that, and that is something that uh, if a authoritarian regime collapses, you don't have anymore. Uh, this is something that will happen if you vote uh, for the affirmative. Mm. Uh, furthermore, she says that uh, sending uh, weapons to authoritarian regimes um, is not uh, is not creating any. Uh, uh, stability. Uh, she brought up the example with Egypt. Well, by sending military aid to Egypt, uh, we forced them to sign a peace agreement with Israel. If we stop sending them military aid, they will just uh, um, get rid of this agreement and we will have new tensions and new uprising conflicts between Israel and Arabic states like Egypt. This is something we truly need to avoid. Um, <coughs> Furthermore, by, set, by sending uh, money to authoritarian regime, we have some sort of influence in that country. We can even try to in, uh, enforce progress 
and enforce democratic values in those countries. For this, I have the example of uh, um, Jordan that is mainly stable because of military aid and furthermore Greece that became a democracy in the 70s. It was only made possible because we secured the country from outside threats uh, back then, uh, communist, communist Russia. So we saved Greece and then furthermore uh, 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 helped hold them in an election and then they became a democracy. Another good example for that is Kenya. <coughs> So by sending military aid to authoritarian regimes, we create democracies. We, we spread our American values. And we ensure and save more lives in it. This is something uh, we as the US uh, surely care about. By having stable regions worldwide, we give our um, economy the opportunity to grow. And this uh, will also lead uh, to benefits uh, within, uh, in our own country. Furthermore, my opponent uh, talked about that, that she will still continue sending military aid to democracies. Well, democracies also, fundament, some democracies still fundamentally don't respect human rights. Look at uh, how I mentioned Brazil, Poland, and uh, so on. If she really stands for her point, she should stop sending military aid to uh, democracies as well. So in my speech, his, uh, in his speech, he posed a problem. Like, are you going to kill one person because, like, otherwise another person will step in and kill two people? And, like, I really think there's a third option here. Like, call the police. Um, I think that we should, the point, my first contention is that the reason why authoritarianism has continued to grow so long is that there's no international leader. Like, all these countries are willing to, like, turn a blind eye when they see a relationship of convenience. And I think the United States, like, taking a strong stand against that, and, like,
we're still providing these other types of aid, like I outlined at the beginning of my case, like democratic aid, humanitarian aid, uh, economic aid to kind of fix the effects of terrorism and, and, and internal conflict, like that's a much better option than like continuing to be part of the problem. If we want to be part of the solution, like we have this like better stage on the world stage to like advocate um, for the things that like if Russia and China are like violating human rights, like we have more credibility when we advocate for that things because like we're not doing the same thing ourselves. Um, so when we're looking at his his value stability, like he's not actually achieving that. In my speech, I talked about how like a lot of terrorists are formed because of anti-American sentiment. Because when we involve ourselves in our issues, they hate us. They don't like to see American-made missiles rain down upon them. So like while like so that he's not solving for a long-term thing. Like, like if we remove our weapons, then terrorist groups don't have a reason to keep evolving and to keep targeting the United States. And that it was unaddressed in my opponent's speech. Secondly, when we funnel uh, money to terrorist organizations through authoritarian regimes, that increases the chances that terrorism will happen. That has also gone unaddressed. Saudi Arabia and Pakistan both have harbored Al Qaeda and ISIS terrorists and have used our, our, our money um, to, to do that, and that actively destabilizes the region. Like, once again, we should always be seeking to be part of the solution and not part of the very problem. Um, so when we're looking at this Russia-China step in, like, first of all, like, Russia and China do not have all the interests, like, in, in the Middle East. Like, Russia is not going to step into Saudi Arabia because, like, uh, Iran is fighting in Saudi Arabia through, like, this proxy war, and since Russia and Iran uh, routinely ally with each other, like, Russia is not going to do that. But secondly, like, they don't have this scale. Um, and able to do it. Like, as I've talked about, the United States GDP <coughs> is so much exponentially larger than Russia's, like, they simply don't have the same capacities. And when we're talking about, like, Russia weaponry, like, killing more people than the United States weaponry, like, that's a non-issue, right? Like, we're seeing the United States, like, indiscriminately targeting, like, Yemeni citizens with drones. Like, there's, we only claim to care more about human rights than Russia does in status quo. Like, when we actually take action and we prevent authoritarian regimes, um, and other places from gaining these weapons so they don't continue to have the means to replace their own people. He can bring up examples like Greece. He can bring up examples like Kenya, but like, we shouldn't have the option to do that in the first place because it is going to go wrong. 